let's take these principles, but now let's see if we can actually apply this to a particular risky enterprise. So we can see how this types of information can actually provide us with some useful information. I've chosen organic broccoli as the product because I wanted to choose a very risky but very profitable investment. And if you go to stores now, organic is the big word. Everything's going green. Okay, everything's being painted green. And there's also a lot of things that this organic is being promoted. And there's a high demand for broccoli. Okay, if we look at this in evaluating this enterprise, let's keep it simple. We'll say the net return to this broccoli enterprise that we plan on growing, obviously is the price times the quantity that we grow minus any cost. That's our net returns. And notation-wise, we're just going to say that the net returns is the price times quantity minus cost, PQ minus C. Again, we're keeping this very, very, very simple. We're going to say that the price and the quantity and the C are all independent. We're going to say that in the broccoli industry, no matter what you do, no matter how much broccoli you grow, it's not going to have one bit of effect on the price. We're also saying that the cost isn't going to affect your quantity. All of those we can find exceptions to, but there's good reasons for us in this class to keep those independent. We're also going to keep it simple and we're going to say there's only two states of nature. Obviously there's infinite number of possibilities in price and quantity and cost, but to make it manageable, particularly here on the screen, we're going to say that there's only two possible outcomes. Two states of nature for price, two states of nature for quantity, and two states of nature or two possibilities for the cost. That means that there's eight different possible outcomes for the net returns because there's two prices, two quantities, and two costs, and those multiply two times two times two gives us eight different states of nature. What would it be if there was three different outcomes for each? Be three times three is nine, and then three times nine is 27, right? So you'd have 27. You can see why we're keeping this just a two by two by two because we went four by four by four, you can see it mushrooms. Okay, the probability of outcomes. We said that for the variable price, there's two outcomes. We're going to say that the price could be a thousand or it could be 400. And this is metric ton. And the probability that we have a thousand dollars per metric ton is 40%. There's a greater probability, 60%, that we're gonna have a lower price of 400. If we look at yield in metric ton, we have a possibility that we're going to get 12 metric ton and there's a 55 percent chance of that. There's also a chance that we'll get only six metric ton per acre and there's a 45 percent chance that we'll get six metric ton per acre. If we look at the cost, the cost fluctuate between 3,000 and 6,000 where there's a 55 percent chance that the cost is only going to be 3000 but there's a 50% chance it could be as much as 6000 And that may be because of different chemicals that have to be put on the crops in some years that may not be needed in other years, insecticides, and maybe water, depending on the drought conditions. What are we doing? We're basically creating the information to create what? Probability distribution. To try and find the probability distribution of net returns, we said that we had eight states of nature. The first state of nature, we have a price of 1,000, of which there's a 40% chance that the price is 1,000. The yield is 12 metric ton, there's a 55% chance. These numbers aren't coming out of a hat. These were given in the previous slide. The cost could be $3,000, and there's a 50% chance that the cost is $3,000 an acre. So if we look at net returns, price times yield, 1,000 times 12 minus 3,000, gives us a possible net return of $9,000, and we multiply the probability for a state of nature together to get the overall probability of 11. We do that for every state of nature. There was two prices, 1,000, and there was also 400 in price, for yield, it's 12 or 6. 
and for cost is alternating between 3,000 and 6,000. We have the probabilities for each of those states of nature and we do the multiplication and we see then that we're getting a discrete probability distribution of the outcomes and their probability ranging all the way from a high of $9,000 net return of a probability of 11% to a possible low of negative of $3,600 at a 13.5% chance of occurrence. Now to calculate the expected returns, what do we do? We multiply the uh, return times its probability, right? Remember the formula that we went over today? We multiply those two together, and then what do we do? We sum them up and it comes to be that the expected return is $1,452. If we just looked at the expected return to organic broccoli, what do we say compared to the normal $100 an acre return from other crops? It's very profitable, right? This organic broccoli seems to be very profitable, so why doesn't all farmers grow organic broccoli? This is the expected value, right? We are ignoring what? the risk. So now we're going to take this piece of information starting with the lowest possible outcome and its probability of 0.135 and notice that that's what this point is right here. It's got a probability you know, that minus 300. That's where that point comes from on this uh, cumulative distribution for broccoli. This gives us our probability distribution function this point right here, it's this point, this minus 1200, and so we're adding the uh, 0.165 and the 0 0.135. Okay. That's where this comes from. I'll give you one more point. This right here is where it's a minus 600 and a little over 40 percent probability. That's coming from, and we're going to add those three probabilities. And the next one up here, you just add the four probabilities to get the probability here. And then the five probabilities to get there. And if you add them all up together, by definition, the probability has to be one. And we keep doing that until we generate this full cumulative distribution for broccoli that comes off of that previous slide. Now that we have this cumulative distribution function, what do we learn from this chart? We can see that the returns range all the way from a minus 3,600 to 9,000. So you have it ranging from a minus 3,600 to 9,000. Your expectations is your profits are going to be between those two points. What else do we learn? Notice that there's a 52% chance that profits are going to be less than zero. In other words, even though we have a high expected return to broccoli, every other year, so to speak, we're going to lose money. There's a 30% chance, one in three years, that we're going to lose more than $1,200. There's a 10% chance, however, that we're going to make more than 6000 You know, every one in 10 years, so to speak, you're going to hit it big. You're going to make lots of money on it to cover those losses. Remember, we said that the expected returns was $1,452. When we take this probability and assign the risk to them, then we see that this is a very risky venture. Is this something that you would recommend that a young farmer that had very little equity, that they'd put all their eggs into organic broccoli? No, because it happens to be that one year that they lose the $1,200. Every one in three years, that's going to happen. They can't survive that. But what about a well-established farmer putting in maybe a tenth of their acreage in organic broccoli so that they could withstand those losses in the years in anticipation for when they can make it all back in the big years? And actually, this isn't a scenario that's hard to imagine because where I grew up, there were a lot of potato farmers, and it was just seems like it was rag to riches. One year, they would hit it big. The prices of potatoes, the yields would be up, and they'd be wealthy. And then the next three years, they'd lose their shirts. Okay, so the point in all of this is that you can't just look at expected profit. You have to look at the risk components of it. And now we've provided this mechanism by which you can obtain this type of information. One thing I didn't do 
is I didn't calculate in class the variance standard deviation coefficient of variation, but in your handout under calculating statistics, and I have that outlined in detail how to calculate those numbers.